Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of January. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to make this super cute denim bucket hat. These are everywhere right now. Bucket hats have kind of had a minute, um, some time in the spotlight. They're 15 minutes of fame over the last couple of years. And these denim ones I've been seeing pop up everywhere are really cute. And as you can tell, they look really kind of scrappy, which I think is really interesting. These obviously are perfect for using up all of your jean scraps, whether that's because you have cut off the legs to make the dress that I showed you guys how to make, or you're just cutting them into shorts because you'd rather have the shorts, whatever it is, um, this uh, project is really great for using up the like bottom half of your jeans, like the, the leg portions. I'm gonna be using the free sewing pattern from Merchant & Mills. Merchant & Mills is a great pattern company. I have never used this pattern before, but I feel like I'm in good hands. All right, so this is what you need. Pay attention to the quantities. We have for the narrow brim, and I think, yeah, for the wide brim too, you still need four cut on fold of your outer, well, two of your outer fabric, two of your inner fabric. So um, four total, and then two of your inner facing if you're using it. I am for my brim, just because this denim isn't, they have a recommendation of eight to 14 ounce denim. I don't think any of the denim that I have is that heavy because it was women's jeans and women's jeans typically just have a lot of stretch in them and they're not that heavyweight. So um, I am gonna be uh, interfacing that. And then you need two or four total of the crown. So two total of the crown top uh, four total of the crown side and four total plus your interfacing of the narrow brim, okay? Then our first step is gonna be to sew the crown sides together. You're gonna be taking them and doing right sides together like this. We're gonna sew these, each one along the side seams and this has a one centimeter seam allowance. Okay, step two is gonna to be to top stitch our side seams and to press them open first. Press them open first. And I'm gonna be using um, a Taylor's ham. This one is for sleeves. You can use the other like egg-shaped one if you have that, but obviously these just make it so much easier to press these seams when they're already in the circle. So press this here. And then it says to top stitch it a foot width away. I don't know what that means. So I'm just gonna be doing an eighth of an inch. <laughs> All right, so now we have something that looks like this. And for what it's worth, if you wanted to do like the kind of scrappy stars or any of those um, kind of scrappy elements where all the fringe was kind of hanging off, this would be the moment where you would attach those. Um, and I say that you should do them after you sew the side seams because I think it's super cool if you have one that crosses over the side seam. For whatever reason to me, that seems just a little bit more intentional and a little bit more, I don't know, just cool. So that's why I would do it after the side seams are sewn. All right, so you can see on my lighter denim here, I've got the 3 8 inch seam allowance for the side seam, and then I've got my 1 8 inch uh, top stitching done there. All right, so now we're going on to step three. This is gonna be easing in um, the top edge of this, so either one of these. Um, so ease stitch a scant centimeter from the top edge of the crown. So scant three eighths, you could even do a quarter of an inch and that would be fine, um, of the crown side, starting at stopping at the side seams. So you're gonna go one, you're gonna stitch here at the longest stitch length that you have, not back stitching. You're gonna break your stitches at one side seam. Then you're gonna start again and do the other side Again, stopping here, breaking your stitches, um, and not back stitching. I'm gonna go do that and then come back for the rest of step three. Okay, so you can see that I have done long basting stitches um, along this inner curve, and I've left long tails so that I can pull up this seam allowance into the crown. All right, so now, this thing should have, did I put my, yeah. So you should have notches at the quarter points. So a notch here, which is that, so that whenever you open this up, you have notches right here. And then along your fold, you should have notched as well. So you have one, two, three, four, like a clock. 
um, four notches. And those are going to line up with the one, two, these two notches and your side seams that are on your uh, crown side. So this notch here and your side seam. So this notch gets placed here and the side seam gets placed here. Now, as you can see, we're putting in a concave and a convex curve together. Um, that's a little bit advanced, but these basting stitches should help. So first things first, you're gonna take one of the notches and you're gonna place it at the side seam, matching the notch to the seam. Pin. I think my pins will work because my fabric is a little lightweight. Okay, great. Now, skipping everything else that's happening in between, you're gonna go to your next notch on both pieces and you're gonna pin that in place. I'm completely ignoring what's happening between these two stitches for now. Okay, that goes here. And again, these are right sides together. So double check that and then move on to your third notch. Should go with the other side seam. And your last notch should be the centers of both of the pieces. like so. All right. So again, I've completely ignored what is happening in between. You can tell that it's, you know, it's a little funky. That's okay. That's, this is whenever you're going to take your basting stitches and you're going to pull them up until all of these things come together and match. All right, here we go. All right, so just fish around until you can find your bobbin stitch. I used two different um, thread colors to make that a little bit easier. And again, you're just pulling this up almost like a gather until these two things come together. It shouldn't require much pulling. Um, so if you feel like you're getting actual gathers, that's probably incorrect. Um, there shouldn't be actual gathers. It should just take away some of that extra bulk seam allowance. Like even that is too much. Can you see how the inside's wavy now? So maybe I pulled it up like half an inch. But yeah, you want these things to come together. And the other thing I tell people whenever we're doing concave and convex curves together is we don't care necessarily what's happening at the raw edge. All we care about is what's happening at your seam line, which for this pattern is 3 8 So try to ignore the waviness so long as at the seam line they match. And if they do, then you can start pinning in between. And I'm probably going to overpin here. I'm an overpinner. What can I say? Rather be safe than sorry. Um, and come in like this. All right, so maybe three in between each of the four quadrants. And do that four times. All right, and when you are done with those shenanigans, shenanigans they are, you should have something that looks like this. And don't be mad, but you have to do it again. <laughs> Do it again for your lining pieces. Then go over to your machine. Not a terrible idea to baste this together first um, to make sure that if there's any puckers or anything, you can go ahead and get them out with the basting stitches before you sew your um, permanent stitch in. So go ahead and do that and for the outer and the lining, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, how many of you were screaming at your screens? I couldn't hear you, but this is just to show that even... People that have been doing this forever and ever still make mistakes because guess who did wrong side and right side together. Now, I will say it's kind of cool, right? Not totally what I'm going for. And I have a giant pucker here that I need to get out. Um, but I just wanted to address it for those of you that were acknowledging that while I was doing that little pinning tutorial. Yes, I see that now. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to go redo this. Um, so following the same instructions I just used, but putting my right sides together like I should. Oh my gosh. And then triple checking on my lining that I do that one correctly. Okay. Um, so yeah, here we go again. Okay, now that I've done that three times, consider myself somewhat of an expert. <laughs> um, 
I did try it both ways where I ran the, I ran it through the machine with the feed dogs on the top as well as the feed dogs um, under the side. And I, it was no better one way or the other. So just do whatever is comfortable for you. Get your puckers out. Um, and then you are going to, again, grab some kind of um, pressing tool. This is the traditional Taylor's ham. And again, it's just gonna be a little bit easier for you to press the seam away from the, what do they call it? Away from the crown top. Take the one that is your outer and you're gonna edge stitch the seam allowances to the crown side. So your stitching will be visible on the front of the hat, not on the top of the hat. All right, so press them both and then edge stitch your outer layer. All right, so step seven is to get your interfacing applied. I did that. I'm using sew-in interfacing just because I wanted it to be really thick. This is a heavyweight sew-in interfacing. So I sewed that on and then I trimmed around, you know, the stitching lines. Now we're going to um, stitch those together. So at the side seam, similar to how we did at the very first step, we're gonna take two of them and put them together and we're gonna take the other two and put those together right sides together and we're gonna sew down the side seams. All right, once you have those sewn, we are not top stitching them, correct. You do wanna press them open though. So go ahead and grab the, either one of your tailor's hams again, press those open. And then we're gonna sew them right sides together along the lower edge. Um, so what would be like, hold on but it would be this edge here. We're gonna sew them right sides together along that edge. Okay, so the next step in the instructions is to layer or trim and layer the seam allowances that you just sewed. I am not gonna do that. If you wanted to do that, layering is whenever the lining edge, you would trim away, you would trim away most of the lining and you would only trim away like half of whatever the outer one is and then Clipping is obviously putting all the little notches in. Instead of doing that, I think I'm going to use my pinking shears to make a bunch of notches and then I'm gonna understitch. I just feel like I kind of love understitching and we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of decorative stitching anyway. So I feel like kind of will get hidden. Most of my thread really matches my fabric anyway. So that's, that's where I'm going. It might not be the best. I, I can't tell if it's like a work smarter, not harder thing, or if it's just, I'm actually just being lazy. I can't tell. <laughs> so, but we're going to try it. You guys can see the results for yourself at the end of the video and then decide which one you want to do. Okay. So this is the result after doing that, where the lining is fully in the lining and all you can see from the outside is your pretty brim. Okay, now for another really cool thing that I'm excited about. This is a gradient kind of like ombre thread. And I think it's going to be so cool to do this next part, which is to top stitch this entire brim over and over and over in this gradient. So it's going to go from light to dark, but all within the same denim colors. Isn't that going to be great? It's by Coates and Clark. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get it at any um, like at Joanne or Michael's or anywhere, but, um, I got it as part of like a, a multi set. I think it was their holiday one, but I think they have it in others as well. I will dig up a link for you guys and put it in the description box for the record, everything that I'm using today, including the Taylor's hams, my scissors, all of that stuff. I will have linked in the description box for you guys. So if you don't have those things or you want to upgrade those things, use what I'm using. Um, it will be in the description box. Okay. So I, oh, also, before you start this part, triple check that your bobbin is like at least half full because this is going to be a continuous seam. Um, so yeah, I'm going to load up a full bobbin to this and then go for it. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Look how cool that turned out. I am thrilled. It almost looks like I hand embroidered it, but I didn't. Um, so I did though run a test because I wanted to make sure it showed up really well. So the one on the left is a single stitch, just your normal stitch. This, what I ended up using is a triple stitch. So on your machine, when you see the three lines next to each other, that's a triple stitch and that's what that does. It basically sews three lines 
right next to each other. So it takes a minute, but totally worth it. Um, if you are going to do this method, for sure, for sure, make sure that your denim is either really sturdy or you have interfaced it because it will be a bit of a beast. But I am so excited. That's going to be so cute. Okay, moving on. We're going to attach the tops to the crown or the crown to the brim now with the right side of the lining to the underside. So like this, throw that in there, stitch together at a scant three eighths of an inch. Okay, got it. And I'm assuming side seams match. We've got that. And then, yeah, so I was like, I swear we have other notches. So you also have, so we were using this notch and it's going to this notch. Those two things, these two are getting put together at this point. Okay. And it should be a little bit easier. As you can see, it's two concave curves. So, oh no, I can get a pin through there. No problem. So it should be a little bit easier than the, than the crown top to the crown side. All right, so now we're gonna, again, take this to the machine. We're gonna do a scant three eighths. All right, we are cruising now. All right, so now we're gonna match up all of those things again, except we're taking what we just sewed. So it's the lining, the brim, all of that gets stuffed into the outer part. So again, matching up, it's gotta be right sides together, Lindsay. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, so put that in here, right sides together, perfect. Okay. My brain is turned on now. All right, so now can I get a pin through all of this? That seems unlikely. Oh, okay, yes, but barely. All right, so then come around. Again, we're sandwiching the brim inside the lining and the outer crowns, I guess. Crown side and crown top. Okay, perfect. Okay, so when you do that, you have a hat on the outside and a hat on the inside and you cannot see your brim. All right, then match up those other six points. Okay, so we're gonna sew around this. We are gonna leave a gap for turning and then we are gonna turn it right side out and then I'm presuming hand stitch that opening closed. Oh no, we're edge stitching. Okay. So we're going to edge stitch it to close it. Perfect. Even better. I hate hand stitching. All right. Here I go. Um, where am I going to leave my gap? They left their gap at a side seam. That seems fine. So that's what I'll do. All right. I figured we would do the big reveal together because this is the most exciting part and turn it right side out um, and reveal what it looks like. Where's my hole? Here she is. Okay, so we've got to, okay, this is easy. All right, everything's got to come through this hole. And I swear, I swear, I thought I was leaving a really big hole because I'm notorious for not making the hole big enough. And I was like being super conscious, like I've got all this to get through here. Make a hole bigger than you think. And it's probably still not big enough. So my battery died during the big reveal. But either way, here is the hat looking really cute. All we've got is this little opening. You need to pin your little hole closed like so. And then the very last step is to run an edge stitch all the way around this. You're gonna start here and come, you're gonna sew very, very close to this folded edge all the way around. Um, and, then, and then we're done. That's gonna close up your hole and that is it. That is the end of the tutorial. This little project is so cute, so fun to whip up. So I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions about any part of it, um, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I hope that you'll go find some denim or any other scrap and make this cute little scrap buster project. That's gonna do it for me today, you guys. I will see you all very soon. Bye.